Looks like we are live, ladies and gentlemen, with the second map. We're going to be getting into it. Lounge Gaming versus Optic Gaming. Optic Gaming currently up 1-0 in this best of three. And they will be starting on the T side on the offense once again. So we see them spreading out across this map. This is a very even map. We expect uh, these teams to kind of meet in the middle as far as the rounds are concerned. 9-6, to 8-7, to seven, something along those lines. So we'll see if Optic can get that strong start. But they go for a great A split through drop through connectors straight onto this A site, and it's all going to come down to the last man alive here. Sparrow he needs to find a headshot. Wow, this is going to be really tricky. He's zoned out as well, looking for the fight. Him and Innocent do pick up a kill each, and Nap and Rush are going down. So Bomb found it, three on three. Great grenade, but Innocent gets shot down with the Glock, and now they have the man advantage, and there's no kit currently picked up. Sparrow, he's sneaking up from behind. He needs a quick kill here. Now his position's been known, and they both get shot down. Simultaneous headshots here, and Optic winning the first map, coming into the second one, and starting off with a good round here at the beginning. Uh-oh, this is this is not a good premonition right now for, <laughs> for you worried, Dan? I'm really worried because this map as well, uh, Optic Gaming, is, even if you're not really comfortable with, ma with this map and they have chosen it, the B split as the as the defending side is so hard to stop if it's well coordinated. Lounge are going to have to show real class to actually uh, and ingenuity to actually be able to stop that considering Optic are going to have way better economy to start things. So Lounge are just going to be just scraping by for quite some time and they've opted to go for a force buy. They spent all their cash here to try and get out what they can which is just some okay pistols and some armor. So. They're going to be looking for some sneaky frags, but Optic, if they've got a good setup, they know where to place their grenades, they should be able to, to, to uh, deal with this quite well. I'm already appreciating what we're seeing out of Optic, though. That was a clever tailor-made strat there, going with that A split through drop. That's not something we see every day in the pistol round. So the fact that Optic are showing, hey, we're a little bit more familiar on this map. The match is going to be a bit harder for you here, Lounge Gaming, and already it was close enough on train to make this match interesting. So we'll see here how it develops. Dash with that MAC-10 will find Oscarish in the, uh, well, basically out of position on the A site. And that's drawing a lot of Lounge Gaming over here, which opens up the B site. Rush takes the perfect time to rush out there and actually pick up a kill. Miu coming in from the side, trying to see if he can stop the bomb from going down. Even if he had, he probably wouldn't have made a big difference. But I mean, they get a kill on Daps and to try and see if they can make their way out. Sparrow, he's picked up the MAC-10. He's got body armor and a smoke. So he's got some, you know, equipment here that he can save for the upcoming round. That might be a good idea. And you, you have to appreciate that when Daps is making a play like that, if it goes wrong and he goes down without killing anyone, he's only giving him a MAC-10. It's not such a big deal. If he gets a kill and gets some information, which he did, then that's huge for them. I mean, it's very low risk and the reward's potentially quite big. So it's a nice idea. And, uh, well, for Lounge, I mean, we're going to be seeing no money on the next round. There's going to be no money for them. It's nice for Optic that they've only managed to lose one guy. And Lounge is going to... It's basically going to be a nothing round. It's going to be about what Spirit can really get done with the MAC-10. And, I mean, since he does like to pick up the AWP, yep. if he can get a couple of kills with the MAC-10, that would be huge for his economy and his ability to find that big sniper rifle in the, in the fourth round. But... Mm -hmm. Uh, we'll see where it takes them. I mean, it's not so easy when you're playing against armor. No. And uh, Optic can be really greedy here as well. They can just hang on to their the Galils that they have and uh, the, the, the SMGs. They can just keep those weapons because they won't be super good, but they can just keep being greedy against Lounge in this position where they already have a lead on rounds. Speaking of greed, Shpero doesn't pass off his pistol as 5-7 to his teammate. Wow. Oscar, well, there you go. Shpero actually manages to pick up the first kill, so that's going to work out just fine. Daps is gone, so good damage here initially. From Lounge, Miles, though, going to get taken out on the B site, and this is going to open everything up here for Optic. They can just push out onto the site now, get control of it, and get that bomb planted. So it comes out now to Sparrow getting in position to get an exit frag, to get somebody from Optic Gaming trying to get away from that bomb when it blows up. So he wants that, but he's already got $600 in his pocket, bonus. Now he wants to get up to 12, and he should have a good chance of getting up to that AWP. Yeah, so Lounge just trying to play for some frags here to see if they can uh, get anything extra done. We'll see a map get picked up by Oscarish. Unfortunately for Lounge, they will lose Spiro. Again, he's trying to build that bank to be able to afford an AWP, getting some extra kills with that MAC-10. Not going to be uh, happening anymore. He'll be shut down. So Oscarish is just trying to be sneaky, trying to hold the back. But you can see smart movement from Optic. They know what is clear, and they're only moving through the spots which have been previously cleared out. So they don't run into Oscarish hiding behind some corner. And there he's forced to go for an engagement. Gets taken down. And Optic, they're playing way better than their train match. They're, when they're faced against low economy, they're handling it properly, they're not really losing anybody. It's all going to be about Lounge actually creating some good adjustments here, but at least Spiro has the AWP, but he's got no armor because he was too poor. Yeah, and that, I mean, that can punish you, but on a map like Cobblestone, where the distance is so great, I feel like it's uh, it's all right to not have the armor. Not a good chance he's going to get created too much. He misses the first shot and tries to go for a bit more. He's got to be careful here and misses the second shot as well. And now the grenades, he managed to dodge them. And again, if you don't have body armor and you and you get hit by a, an HE grenade, you take so much more damage. Uh, so you've got to be really careful about that. He's not falling too far back, and he's got a bit of backup here. This is 
not a, a, a good defense, I think, for Lounge over at the B bomb site, which is so popular. If they get pushed in with only three people there, that's going to be a big problem. There's a bit there's a bit of the bait though. One shot going out from that AWP that puts Oscar here in position to actually catch them off guard, but he peeks out, he gets impatient, and Shazam spots him immediately. Easy headshot there for Shazam to open up that A site. We have a big rotation coming out here from Lounge, but unfortunately for Optic, they aren't in position to take advantage of that. Three guys over on that A site, and Optic, the bomb is over here on A. They had four players here as well. They just couldn't pounce on the B site to take a, take advantage of that mistaken positioning. Stanislaw is going to go down. That was Mihu with a big kill. And now that's going to bring it back. Four on four. 50 seconds left. And Rush making his way onto the plateau here. Mouse with a big kill. Going for a little bit more. He was a big player for Lounge Gaming on train. And he's going to have to step it up again. It's shot in the back door by Shasam. And now it's down three on three. 35 seconds left. Nap picking up a kill. And Innocent all alone here. Optic, if they win this round, the first time that Lounge can actually buy rifles here on Cobblestone. And they might just get shot out of the round. And that's so disappointing. And it's so disheartening. Innocent, I mean, he's walking into a triangle and it's not going to be good here. Innocent, a little bit of damage, but now they're closing in on him and he's going to get shot in the back as well. Ends up dropping to Shazam. A uh, big round for Optic. And that, that round told me a lot about the mind state of Lounge because, they, I mean, already Spiro is taking big risks with the orb. He was re peeking in a spot where, for the timing where he was still there, there can be someone pushing him very close and they know he was playing that position, so that was already very risky. But then they have a huge overreaction. They move all the defense towards A, and Optic had so much time left to play with, and he didn't show the bomb yet. Lounge are overreacting, and they've got to start calming themselves down if they want to be able to effectively defend against Optic, because they actually played that round very well. I think you know, how they slowly went back towards B. I think it worked perfectly. It did work perfectly, but I think mainly because Miles wasn't able to hit the shots from Box. Unfortunately for uh, Lounge, that would have made all the difference. He picks up two, Rush in a great position to catch that flash through. He's not blinded when it goes through uh, that smoke, and so he's able to pick up the double kill. And now Innocent's going to have to go ahead and take a little bit of a risk here. He's going to play an off angle, but they're going to spot him out. Rush is hungry. He gets three, nearly gets four as well. Sparrow was just taking a step to the left. He would have been gone. And instead, he's going to be able to actually just end that streak. So big advantage here for Optic. This should be you know wrapped up nice and neat for them. They shouldn't lose anybody else here to Oscarich. That really looked like Russia done the convoy there. Yeah. Very nicely done there by Sam as well. And, and let's, let's look at the, the dilemma right now for Lounge. Lounge are going to have again the situation where, okay, they can buy some, some weapons, but generally speaking, their defense has not been working out. They might be feeling like we, we need to cu uh, cut some corners here. So, you know, one way that a team might do that is they might position four players towards B because that sort of can be a really, really hard push to hold. Optic is quite likely at this point that they're going to go for a hard B here. They've not really tested Lounge there uh, thoroughly uh, with the kind of set plays we're used to seeing. But Lounge going with a very standard play here, and we are going to see a very fast B play from Optic indeed. Wow, they're just pushing right in here. Naf leading the charge with the M4, and they line up. He almost sprays down both of them. That AWP not being put into play on the CT side yet. Mihu, he's got a kill on Naf, and they're very low on the terrorist side. It might actually be possible for them to bring him back, but damn, burning Mihu alive. I don't think he realized the Molotov was up, and now Spero and Oscaris, they have to fall back, even if they're so low on health on the terrorist side. They can't afford to give up these rifles. Oscaris going to pick up one, but there's a guy right behind them in the smoke. Stanislaw hasn't really been found out yet, and it's still a 2 1 3. They're trying to see if they could bring it back in here, but I don't think they should. I think they're going to end up giving away these rifles, and that would be a big, big mistake. Rush is going to end up going down. Stannis over the kill there as well. And now, well, six rounds in a row for Optic Gaming. They survive both uh, Daps and Stannis with seven health each, yeah. but they do win the round. I, I don't want to be outcome oriented or in, in any way, or, or, you know. But I feel like you know, Lounge do need to take some risks. They need, they need to stop this momentum from Optic. I think you know the, the, the B defense early in the game, we have four players there. You play very def defensively on A. That could have been a good uh, response to it. But now they're actually going for another buy instead of saving. That means there's no AWP on Spiro. They've got a max seven. They're lacking grenades. They're in a desperate situation where they got a disadvantage. Optic, they're playing patiently. They are trying to allow Lounge to make mistakes in their desperate state, and then they're just going to shut it down. And what was that? I think a bit, a bit over twelve thousand dollars on Shazam, and he's the all player, so he can buy that out for a long time, and that's a big problem for Lounge Gaming. It means once they, if they start winning rounds, they'll have to win consecutive rounds to actually break that terrorist side economy. So they've got a lot of trouble right now on their hands, and um, not much of an answer it seems. A similar setup with two people playing over at A long and three people set up over at B. And that three people set up at beats, it is easy to break if you know what you're doing, and it definitely seems like Optic do. Yeah, they've, got, they've still got control of drop at least, so Innocent, he is playing up close there. He's looking to try and catch uh, one of the angles that Optic might use to get out onto this B site. And now they're going to start changing it up. They're going to give up control of that. They want to focus on Plateau. Mihu might be in a bit of a tight spot here. Molotov goes down behind him, and he can't capitalize. He doesn't get a kill. 
but there will be a trade. Mao's at least is able to pick off Rush. There's the push from Stanislaw. Well. He doesn't look left somehow, and that's opening it up from Mao's to just wreck his team. Shazam and Nap are the last two alive and not for long. Oh, Innocent with a shot there, Nat fly alone in a one on three. It might be time for Polish team to finally pick up a round here on Cobblestone, and it's much needed as well. Sparrow going to be taking down Naf and a triple kill for Mouse. I mean, it seems like if anything has to work on this Lounge gaming side, it, it has to start with Mouse. Oh yeah, and this is actually a really scary position for Lounge because they need to stabilize right now. If Optic are able to win a round after uh, in, you know, doing the damage that they did previously, Lounge's money is going to be completely destroyed and they're going to have a horrible half. Lounge need to win this next round. It's so incredibly crucial. We do get a full buy here. And this is going to be a big deciding round here. Rush just goes right through, which barrel point blank picks him off. Luckily, though, Stanislaw is in position to actually get that refrag. And so Optic, they can speed up right behind this. The bomb is with them here on the A site. They just got to go crashing through the defense. An innocent down at connector. A big opening. Skaris here shooting them in the back, but he's missing every single bullet, it seems. And Naf in turn picking up a double. That was a horrendous defense. And now it's going to be down to Mouse in a one on four. There's not a lot that he can do. And this is the worst possible situation you could be in in Counter Strike. Because as you lose, and this is how the economy works, as you lose, you build up a round loss bonus all the way up to 3,400. When they win the round, they reset that bonus. They're down to 1,400 around. So now they have no money, no equipment, and it's going to be a while before they can actually start buying again. This is a very, very bad position to be in. Yeah, and, and again, like you said, the, the defense there was really atrocious. I mean, Percy Spear is taking a risk early to go for the pick. That's okay. I mean, the, the fact that Optic did rush him down, that's, that's it's hard to really predict that. He did even get a frag, but it's really up to the two players coming in from behind that position. They both got killed one versus one. That cannot happen in that kind of a spot. And uh, as you mentioned, the, the best case scenario for Lounge right now looks like, you know, maybe a 10-5 scoreline for Optic. That is probably best case for them in this position. If, they, if this finishes 10-5, I, I, will, I will definitely applaud Lounge. That would be incredible if they could bring it back to that. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm hearing it's going to be <laughs> much worse than that, <laughs> like a 12-3 kind of uh, kind of finish here. Optic, they look, uh, yeah, just completely unstoppable. They look c very comfortable. It's a different Optic that we're seeing. I mean, that is just winning that first map on screen where they did look a little shaky has given them the confidence here necessary to go onto Cobblestone. And it seems Cobblestone is a map that they're just, they're feeling their game on. They, they know what they need to do. We aren't seeing any of the hesitation that we saw on screen that ended up costing them rounds versus Lounge. So Lounge, the fact that they're getting their economy reset again is just going to base. I mean, it's going to put so much pressure on them. You even see a little bit of a base pop coming out. They know that they're really deep in this. They know that they're so far behind. And I mean, when our analyst panel were sort of pointing out that this is a young team for Lounge Gaming, this is where it really kicks in. Yeah. They do have Lord behind them, but I mean, he can't sort of just transfer all of his uh, experience onto them. And if they're starting to lose control mentally, if they're starting to get a little bit too nervous, again, this is a chance they might never have again to try and play in a league as big as this one. Um, there's a lot of pressure on them right now, and they, they do seem to be crumbling a little bit under that pressure. They are going to at least get, yeah, Dap's calling up a nice shot there. That isn't an easy one, especially if he's bottom ramp. For Sparrow to pick him off from the top of it. Stanislav will find the last kill on Maus, and they do keep control of the situation. Optic, four players alive, and their money is completely out of control. Optic don't have anything to worry about in this half now. It's going to take several rounds before they're broke, before they have to go to pistols. They're pretty much always going to have the rifles here to work with. So, again, just another thing that's stacking up on Lounge, making their job that much harder here. They won't have any easy rounds to play with. And, well, they go into the big buy round here. They have to do it, but they're light on nades. They have no kits. They're just cutting corners. They're hoping that they can get lucky here. Oh, definitely need some luck right now. It could really help them out. You said they needed point. to take some chances, and I actually yeah. think you're right, Dan. I think you, you can't just play this by the book when you're no, this no, far no. down. You, you've got to try and see if you can roll a, roll a really hard six here. Well, and we're in Vegas, right? So, And Optic have been throwing in <laughs> some, some pretty crazy rounds here and we there. Are, we are in Vegas, and I think the chances of you hitting a jackpot are still sort of better than an NA team actually winning a, a <laughs> tournament, but, um, but it might just be happening here. Is this Vegas after all? All right, well, it looks like Optic are moving in towards middle now, so they're taking in, uh, control of both sides of the map. And what they're setting up here is they're looking to be an A-side push, but it's like the defense here is being... It's okay if that does go down, then things can work out for Lounge, but Optic, they're trying to create a, a disparity in the defense there. They're trying to make the CTs move towards the a bomb site. It didn't happen, so Lounge are in a pretty good position here. Four versus two, and Optic have to make a call, and it's oh. going to have to be a risky one. I mean, I was going to say that Optic are doing a very, pretty good job of getting in position, like, the buddy system yeah. is being used, right? Where you, you have the first man who goes in. If he gets caught, you have your second man right behind him who gets the refrag, trades effectively, right? We are seeing that from Optic, but they did get whittled down in this round. They ended up losing a couple of players here over on long, and that's not going to help things here. Although Shazam 
She might be in a bit of a tricky spot here because Miku gonna go for the pop flash straight out and it's super effective. Big spray from him and somehow he doesn't capitalize. No way, you're supposed to win that every single time. It was so beautiful as so we got both of them with the flashbang. Now Mouse is playing close and here's the problem, the time that's left. 15 seconds and they finally drop Mouse but Oscar is still here. Can they get that bomb plant down? Napwise the one who has it, 10 seconds. Oscarish, if he pushes up now, Shazam is going to try and put the bomb down. One bullet, he's missing the shot, and now the bomb is going to go down with four seconds left. Oscarish, one bullet on either player is going to be enough, but Shazam, he brings it back, and they win that two on four. Oh, no. Optic, oh, just unbeatable God. right now. That is so painful to, to witness. That's very hard to watch. Yeah, that is hard <laughs> just to watch. a little, you know, grinding your teeth a little bit, just wincing a little bit there. That is hard to watch. That, that as Anders said there, that's an every time situation. Me who gets those kills through rounds one. At He's least one of them, just one would be enough. Oh yeah. Whew, okay, so they need to be able to reset themselves after that because that's one of those spots as well where you start to really tilt. You know, we're in poker. We can use, you know, it's in Vegas. We can use poker terms here. Well, we can't. We can't obviously hear the communication. But when you start to see mistakes like that, it is an indication. It is a symptom of, of sort of the, the breakdown on the team. And we've seen it before. But it's it is rough to see because you know that he should have got that kill. Uh, Got to point out how well Naf is playing. He's yeah. 13 and 3 right now. That's incredible. Yeah, Naf has come alive on this map. He is doing fantastic work right now for Optic. Well, we're going to see another Molotov going down, forcing Mihu out of position. He's going to have to jump back. He does decide to change it up, though. He's not going to fall back to the site. Instead, he's holding close, and that's going to cost him full flash. But he still gets the headshot somehow. He makes it expensive, at least a little bit here for Optic. But Optic, again, they have the advantage. They have the rifles. And now they're clearing out all these angles. They should be able to get off to this site. No problem. But it is taking a little bit more work. Nice shot there from Stan, though. Great spray transfer onto the second target. Oh, dear. I'm still, uh, <laughs> I'm still I'm trying to rack my brain around this. You know, how can how can Lars find their way back into this one? And you know, when it comes to you know, st strategy, tactics, and all that kind of stuff, well, we've, we've seen Lounge in spots where they have picked the right strategies. We've seen them in spots where you know, like the Miku there, where tactically, he's got a ridiculous advantage. But in both situations, they're not closing. So this is a really hard spot. They need to, they need to somehow rally together and take a deep breath calm themselves down, take their time, and try to re-enter some kind of a comfort zone. But when you're when you're in this kind of position where you know that you, if you lose this map, it's done, Yeah, that's really hard. But the, the only saving grace that they have here is that lounge, all they really need is something around three rounds. Because the, the T side of, of this map is very strong. It is very strong. If you've got a really strong um, you know, B split even, if uh, some teams can get yeah. really far with just that alone. I I there mean, is still hope for them. I think, I think if they get three rounds, then winning the pistol round is, is a definite requirement. Yeah. I think if they we only got three rounds and lose the pistol, it's done. Yeah, it if they win three rounds and get the pistol, I think they even still need to win the fourth round. I, it's going to be so rough. Yeah. A real uphill battle here for, uh, for the Polish side. I mean, 10-1. You guys just saw train and it was much more even ended 13 16 in favor of optic sparrow finally announcing himself and coming up with a kill on daps more of that please yeah, he has been going for that aggressive peak through underpass though up towards two spawn he just he keeps on doing it this time he's actually successful with that opening frag and there is no refrag for optic they can't get in there and get that trade kill so this is an important round here it's set up nicely for lounge gaming to just now fall back play from the site play the clock make Optic Gaming have to just, you know, check all these corners, waste a lot of the time that's so valuable here. Lounge do not need to be peeking. They don't need to be giving them anything here to work with. Taking a risk where Optic get a kill like that, Shazam will find Sparrow in the end. And this is how Lounge Gaming can lose this round by peeking unnecessarily. Yeah, you're absolutely right. This is very dangerous now. We're back into a tight situation, but Stan is picking up the shot on Innocent. It's going to make things very tricky here. Three on four. Molotov's coming in to try and block off the entrances, and alone in the back of the side is Oscarish, and this would be one hell of a hero performance if he can actually survive this and even get a couple of kills. He's trying to push out early. He sprays and takes down Stanislaw, but not going to be enough. Rush will take him down. Nafly dropping Mouse, and Mihu alone in a one-on-three, and the bomb has gone down. And I mean, you don't really want to save a rifle when you're this far behind, but at the same time... You might just need that rifle in the upcoming round. The chance that you'll win a one-on-three like this, very, very slim. It is, but he has to go for it. He has to take the risk, and it's not going to work. Second man on that site. Good gamble there, paying off by Russian Optic. He's able to just catch him off guard as they push out. But again, I think right now, you know, irregardless of experience, we're seeing something that happens sometimes where when the first map in a best of three is so close, and the team that loses might feel that they should have won it, it's so difficult for them to get their head back in the game in the second round, or the second map of the series. And sometimes it just doesn't come together at all, which is what we're seeing now. You know, Lounge, they keep getting in positions where they should be able to lock it down and, you know, take some rounds here on their CT side, but they just aren't able to. Optic, 
they've got them in that chokehold. Oh yeah, they're loving it at this point. They're really loving it. There's nothing that they can do wrong at this stage. <laughs> it would feel for them. They could, you know, do any crazy kind of plays. And it's, they're gonna probably make it look pretty good at this point in time. So it makes your job harder as well, Dan, because yeah. you know, trying to analyze what's oh, yeah, happening. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can get into this zone, and because lounge gaming, you're making a lot of small mistakes and and finding it hard. I mean, that that brilliant pop flash from Mihu there that, that ended up failing. You can't really analyze that except to say that that. It should have worked. He should yeah, have got at least one, maybe both of the kills. But because they're feeling the pressure, because they realize how far they are behind in, in the game, they make some, some bad mistakes, and it's, it's really hurting them here. It's the difference between the Tier 1, the, the teams that yeah. win tournaments. Now, we've seen teams like Fnatic, like the best teams in the world, come back from these sorts of situations. That's the beauty of CS. You're never out of the match. You can always make a run back happen. Uh, you have to have the experience to do so. You have to have the bravery. And right now, we just aren't really seeing it. Shazam, Stanislav, both picking up kills. Nice peek there by Mousy. He's going to be able to convert that into three, but he's not going to be enough. They do manage to get him down, and now with 30 seconds left, there's plenty of time here for Optic to get the bomb plant and get in position to hold this site. I think Stanislaw got spotted there by Sparrow, though. This might be some information, but there's the spray from Stanislaw, and that's pretty much the kill that's going to make the difference in this round. Huge triple for him here. Naf is going to spray him down through the corpse of a teammate, and Naf going to finish the round right there. 12-1 in favor of Optic, and we've got it. I mean, m that triple spray with the with the Formaspol weapons, like possibly the worst weapon to try and continue to spray with, still makes it work, and it's not enough. I mean, if you've got a player who picks up a triple kill, you win that round. Yeah. Except Lounge aren't winning it. Yeah, I mean, Spirit wasn't a bad spot. I tried to approach from the back with a mag set on range. Not the easiest, but yeah, that was a little bit lackluster. Mouse is, has been stepping his game up where you know, other players haven't been, and they're going for an aggressive play. So they're trying to take forward positioning here, and Nafi is going to completely destroy them. Wow. Uh, they, it looks like they went for the double flash through smoke again, or rather the flash with the double push in behind it. And Optic are just not getting caught off guard by that. That's the second time that that's failed, and it's just not working out. Innocent with no Kevlar taking nades to the face. That is not what he wants to happen. He's down to 40 HP, and he's going to have to fall back, but Naf is going to hunt him down. Third frag of the round for Naf, and Stanislaw decides to chime in with one of his own. Yeah, I mean, you can understand. It's, it's a good it's a good play to try to go for a risk, a good idea, but it's much harder on this map than others to do it as a CP side. And it's just not panning out here for now so far. Oscar is able to pick up one frag at the end there, but it's going to be another round for Optic. 13-1 is such a massive scoreline. Again, it's a very T-sided map, but I mean, we've got to wonder about how Lounge are you know, feeling mentally. This has been the theme. I, I, I would sort of dare to say that they're feeling pretty terrible at the moment. <laughs> and this, is, this is a big opportunity for them. On the yeah. other hand, uh, Optic King, you know, just picked up by a huge organization, tons of fans as well watching, and um, yeah, this is gonna, this is obviously a fantastic start for them if they can sort of qualify for the E League right away. Shazam with the AWP, the money is never going to be an issue for Optic here. And on the lounge side, I mean, it's it's very scarce. Two Max Sevens, couple of Famas, a single M4. That's what they've got to work with. And I mean, at this point, the best they can do is 13-2. Uh, try and win this last round of the half. Cross your fingers. And Nath decides to go aggressive after playing pretty passively so far, waiting for that push to come through from Lounge if they decided to go for it again. And there it is. And he's going to get rewarded. Free kill on to Mihu. Mihu doesn't know what hit him. But that's not where the push is going to come through here for Optic. Instead, it's going to be Sparrow annihilating Stanislaw. And he could get a second one. He does! Both headshots, and that could turn it around here for Lounge. Now they've actually got some weaponry, weaponry to work with here. Yeah, they stopped the play there. The idea was that Naf was supposed to lurk and keep pressure, keep players from rotating to A whilst the push goes in towards that A-bomb site. But here it is, plan B, quite literally, as they move on to that B-bomb site, and Naf gets the opener. Oh, there you go, Shazam. It's gonna drop innocent. This is looking awful again for Lounge. It's like watching a car crash, you just can't look away. <laughs> <laughs> Everything they do is turning out perfectly right now for the North American side here. Sparrow and Oscar is left, but they're very low on health. Still 30 seconds here, and Rush gonna try and move away his round. He's trying to shoot the, uh, the rock there, but not quite working out. Shazam though picking up the last couple of kills, making it a triple, and they win the first half 14 to 1. That's ridiculous. You know, I was talking about how, you know, usually at the majors, right, NA are the ones. This time, they're the ones who've got, you know, I don't know, the glass in their mitt or something like that. They're just <laughs> laying them out. This is ugly. Well, yeah. talk about total dominance here for NA. I mean, if anything, NA really needed this sort of uh, confidence boost, right? You know, just a oh, dominant yeah, yeah. map to lock out a best of three to establish that they are the top dogs here. Yeah, we were talking about sort of sort of the, you know, how, how good of a pickup was it by the Optic organization to, to get this team. I mean, mm -hmm. with this kind of victory early on, definitely a, a fantastic start for them. 14 to 1. Surely, Dan, there's no way to lose this. 
No. <laughs> <laughs> there is, I mean, again, Counter Strike is always a way back, but right now, Lounge just look too broken. Like, they do get to dictate the pace, but it has to start on this pistol round. Pistol round, it just often comes down to those shots. Strategies can be very loose. And you can have a very fast pace. The Glocks just need to close the distance against those USPs of the CT side. And they're trying to do so towards the A side. They've got Innocent on the B side of the map, trying to be a lurker, trying to just potentially go into the drop zone. It's where he wants to tr uh, try to come into the flank. And now just slowed their pace now. They're looking for potentially a, a, just an opening kill if the CTs get aggressive. But they're just holding it. And here it is. The push comes in towards A. Daps isn't able to capitalize on that though. Mouse is going to take his face off, but there are two players here still alive on the side. Shazam finds a headshot, and Rush gives away his position. Up close with the CZ75, he's trying to reload, and it takes so long, and they give him the time! He gets the punish, and what is that? He actually manages to bring it back, Rush. Now he's actually got a better gun to work with as well. He was out of bullets in the CZ, he had to pick up that Glock, and Oscar is just going to take him down now. It's all on Nafi. One on two. He's got a good angle to try and get some headshots, but he's going to try and switch it up here. Still no bomb plant for the terrorist side. It's just going to go through now, and now this would be complete robbery if he actually comes away with this round. He's definitely not favored in it, and now it should be done. He's down to three health, and they know where he is roughly as well. He's putting some shots through here at uh, Lounge Gaming. I think they may have bought themselves just a bit of breathing room. He ends up dropping. It's a quad kill here for Oscarish, and that's going to be the round. Lounge, they hang on. That's where you see, though, the nerves coming through. When you have a CZ-75 reloading, it takes a long time to reload that gun. Yeah. So if you aren't pushing him, if you aren't just in his face, getting rid of him immediately once you hear that reload sound go off, you know the nerves are there. They're like, ah, is he, you know, should we do it, shouldn't we? Oh, I think they're going to go for a stack towards the A side here. They're playing really just, <laughs> this could be quite painful for Lounge to like move in towards the A side there. It looks like Optic are expecting this. I'm very scared for Lounge right now because things have not been looking so good for them, but they make the right entrance through the underpass there. Now towards the A bomb side, they stop us, uh, spotted the stack, and they're actually dealing with it pretty well with the Mac 10s. So it looks okay for Lounge right now. Doing fantastic, although Shazam is able to make it a little bit more expensive here. He picks up another kill. Innocent with the refrag. Sparrow is so low though, he's only on one HP. If Naf he picks this timing, perfectly done. I'm surprised Spur is trying to take an engagement there. Team have the bomb site. He's got man. one HP. What can you do? You know that the there's wall. a guy's there. Just run, just run. No escape. <laughs> he had nowhere to go, Dan. <laughs> All right, so it's like Lounge are holding on so far, but uh, I would say the greatest test lies is yet to lie in, lie in the future rounds when the buys come in, but there is no, there's no, they can't fail at all. There's no buffer of rounds for them to work with. If, if they lose a round, it's already going to be match point for Optic. Yeah, we got to give it to Naf though. He's had a terrific performance on this second map. He's already up at 21 frags. I mean, that's like a three to one ratio. That is really yeah. good. I feel like the, the sort of the, the classic development from here on out in a game of Counter-Strike is actually for, for a team like Lounge to sort of start bringing it back a lot. But once they get close, this is the problem. Mm -hmm. If they, br let's say they bring it back to sort of 14, 13 type scoreline, that's where so suddenly the nerves are in again. Because until that point, you're, you're actually already sort of in the mental state that says, We've probably lost this, let's just try and you know play the best that we can from now on. And then you're back at 14, 13, you realize we could actually win this. And then it goes out the window again. So that happens a lot and um, hopefully won't happen this time around. It'd be great to see a third map. But I mean, Op Optic on the other hand, they've been, they've, they've really earned this. They've deserved it so far. Well, Lounge really need that third map. Mirage is a map that they should be heavily favored on. Yeah. But they can, if they could somehow you know make the comeback happen here, we've already won the best comebacks we've ever had in CSGO. But to take it to a third map, that would be truly fantastic. It's their best shot. But, well, they're doing a pretty good job here. Optic of just laying waste to Lounge. Nafly with head. Galil, he's going to pick up another kill. And it's down to Innocent and Oscarish, the last two alive here for Lounge. Not like this, Anders. It cannot go down <laughs> in an anti-epo. Well, Nafly feels differently about that. He steals the Galil and picks up two kills with it. Innocent and Oscarish are left now. So two on three here. They still have control of the bomb, which is very important, but... Wherever they move, Optic is, should be having a pretty good read on it. The only advantage right now is the lack of the Fuse Kit right now on Optic, and obviously the sort of weaponry is a bit worse, so... Lounge could bring this one back, but it's it's looking tricky anyway. Yeah, it looks like Das oh. has a good idea. If Das gets these shots off, that is that's, that is a good game right there. It's going to come down to these uh, these opening engagements. That's lurking in there, it is. He gets the kill, and Oscarish has to get it done. One versus three, it's not going to happen. And that's match point now for Optic Gaming, and I, ca I can't really emphasize, emphasize this enough. Lounge had the right idea, but the execution on the coordination was really terrible in that yeah. round. If they if they coordinate that uh, properly, and you know because they had a really nice four position on Spirit with a Mac 10, he got straight into drop zone. He was too ang uh, angsty though. He just went straight in. Uh, too anxious, and, and yeah. his teammates were nowhere near in position to support him. 
Well, he is nearing the end here. It's 15 to 3. We're in the 19th round of the second map. And Optic, they've already won train. They line up for Shazam. He almost gets a double shot. Then he only takes down Miu. But Rush is there. Takes one, takes two, then three. Two of them headshots and Innocent. Well, he's going to be the last left here. It's a one on three. And Optic Gaming. They might just be one kill away from qualifying here for the E-League. Innocent trying to play around the uh, statue and seeing if he could somehow make it out. But you got to feel like even if he does, will it really make a difference in the long run? He's hiding in the corner and Dap's trying to check for every single part of this bomb side. He goes down. Nice shot from Innocent. That's a triple. He's looking for the quad. Stannis was right there. AK comes out, but Stannis is going to win the round. And 16-3. Optic, they've made it through. What a success for Optic. North America 2-0 over Europe, and they actually get the job done. They get that spot in the Turner E-League. Wow. Well, there it is, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, just a, a special thanks to the uh, downtown Grand Hotel in Las Vegas for taking care of the players. Obviously, also the Faceit platform. Go and check out Faceit.com and uh, participate and join up. And also need for seat, uh, you know, players sitting comfortably while they're playing. And now we're going to go to the analyst desk to break down this second map.